Hey YouTube, what's up? This is Troy Port K signing in. This is part two of the WWE Raw review, Monday Night Raw, May 19th edition in London. Okay, so I want to talk about Paige versus Alicia Fox. Now, of course, Paige is going to get a great reception from the crowd because she's in front of her hometown, and I'm sure she was really excited to be there in front of her hometown, and the crowd was going crazy for her. However, Alicia Fox won. It was a decent match. I, I like Paige. I think she has a lot of potential, but she still needs to prove herself. She's only been in the WWE for a couple months now. So she needs to have more matches under her belt. Surprisingly, Alicia Fox won. And, you know, the Divas matches are getting a little more interesting, in my opinion. And they're developed. I think they're working. The creative team is putting forth more effort developing storylines among the Divas, which is a good thing because. In the past, it was kind of boring. And, yeah, okay, AJ was fun to watch and all, but I'm glad. I, I like the direction they're going with the Divas division. And Alicia Fox had her outburst again, which is funny. I'm glad that they're actually doing something different with the Divas. I'm glad that Alicia is going crazy. I th find that really entertaining. She took some fans' coke. Um, she took Jerry Lawler's crown. Next time Alicia Fox is out, she'll take something of Michael Cole's, but Michael Cole doesn't wear a hat or something, or a hat or anything, so it would be funny if she took something of Michael Cole's, like his tie or something, who knows, I don't know, but I think her uh, outbursts are pretty funny and entertaining. Okay, okay, so next you see the Wyatt's talk, and for once Luke Harper and Eric Rowan actually talked. But Eric Rowan had, had like one line. He said run or something like that. And Luke Harper talked a little bit. And I understand Bray Wyatt, Bray Wyatt is going to talk the most because he's the leader of the group and he's the best on the mic. But it was nice to see that Luke Harper and Eric Rowan actually got some lines. Even though Eric Rowan's line was one word. But still, he talked. He actually talked. Um, basically talking about Cena and stuff that in their upcoming match and stuff like that in the, their rivalry. I'll get more to that later. Okay, next match. The third beat the clock match of the night. Mark Henry versus Dolph Ziggler. This was a pretty good match. I was really rooting hard for Ziggler. As much as I like RVD, I'd like to see Ziggler get a push. He deserves it. Um, he ha doesn't win very often, and he needs to start winning again, in my opinion. And I think the crowd can really get behind him. But here's what happened. Ziggler was about to beat Henry, about to pin him, but time ran out, unfortunately. So, what does this mean? RVD is going to be facing Wade Barrett for the Intercontinental title at Payback. So, hopefully, Ziggler gets a push at some other point down the road. We've been waiting for so long. The, I'm, the majority of the fans, in my opinion, have been waiting for Ziggler to get a push, and he deserves it. So, give him a push, WWE, if you're watching. Okay, moving on. Um, and it's a shame that he ran out of time. But oh well. You know what would have been interesting? If he pinned Henry in the same amount of time as RVD. But that would have been kind of that would be really hard to script in my opinion. That would be kind of tough. But that I want, what would they do then? Have uh Ziggler go up against RVD or something? I don't know. That would have been really interesting though. Okay. Um So RVD comes out to celebrate for like he comes out for not even like five seconds, and all of a sudden he gets attacked from behind by Barrett, and the crowd goes crazy for Barrett, which is expected. The crowd was chanting Barrett a lot and loudly earlier in the night, so you knew that Barrett had to make an appearance at some point. I wish he was actually wrestling that night in front of his home crowd, but at least, at the very least, at least he made an appearance. He attacked RVD. The crowd was going absolutely nuts for this guy. That was awesome. That was a good moment of the show. One of the, one of the Good moments of the show, in my opinion. Um, all right. Adam Rose comes out. The crowd actually got into it, as expected. If, they, if they're going to Fandango's music, they're going to get into Adam Rose's music. I, I expected that. Now, in the States, the, uh, most of the U.S. fans couldn't care less. There, there might be a few fans here and there like getting into Adam Rose's music. And it's catchy. Don't get me wrong. But... The thing is, is that, I don't know, Adam Ruse's character is kind of odd, but at least it's a little different, sort of, sort of, but 
I don't know. I think that's the biggest pop he's going to get, in my opinion, most likely. But who knows? Maybe he'll hear his character will grow on people and his storyline will grow on people and more and more people will get into it. Hopefully, it's possible, but I don't see it happening. Let me know what you think. Do you think his character is going to catch on or do you think he's going to get buried fairly soon? Maybe not like within the next couple of weeks, but in the next couple of months, like people who will just be a side note. You know what I think they should do? We haven't seen Zack Ryder in a while and I think they should ha have Zack Ryder team up with Adam Rose. I think that's very possible that could happen because if you think about it, Zack Ryder is another wrestler who likes to party and I think they would be the perfect fit for a tag team or the two of them could have a feud or something which is possible too. I think that would be interesting but I think Zack Ryder needs to get some more matches here. I mean we haven't seen him in a while so that could be interesting. Interesting developments. There's interesting possibilities. Um, but anyway, so Rose comes in the ring and he gets interviewed by Renee. Now, the, Renee is good. I think she's pretty good, but here's the thing. <laughs> Adam Rose didn't really answer any questions. Why be a lemon when you can be a rosebud? And he, like, like I said, he didn't answer the questions and all he did was party, which was fine. That's his character. That's his routine. Then all of a sudden... He attacks Swagger, and uh, that was that. As usual, like a couple weeks ago, he attacked Swagger in the ring when he debuted. Um, but before that, actually, Zeb Coulter was in the ring, and I like the... His character isn't likable, but he's good at cutting promos. He's enter very entertaining. I really like his deportation list. I think that's hilarious. Okay, now we get to the main match of the night. Cena versus Luke Harper, and this is another situation where I'd really like to see one-on-one -on -one without anyone interfering. Can we get a match where two wrestlers wrestle and there's no interference? Now, if that happens every once in a while, fine. That could be interesting, but if it happens all the time, come on. It's like, it's so predictable. Like the Shield, like Seth Rollins versus Bautista. I mean, can we just have one match? One match where no one interferes? I mean, okay, it maybe it happens from time to time, but it doesn't happen too often, in my opinion. Anyways, um, Cena versus Harper. The crowd was getting behind Harper. And uh, I think Harper's actually a pretty decent wrestler when given a chance. Or when, when given a chance. Now, of course, you hear the, let's go Cena, Cena sucks. Let's go Cena, Cena sucks. And then the crowd was um, really getting into it. The whole world in sense. And you know something? Okay, I get it. Michael Cole's a face announcer, quote unquote. But Michael Cole's sometimes really annoying. I mean, it's like, this, this crowd, why are they rooting for Cena? He doesn't say it, but you know he's thinking it. It's like, uh, it's like shut up, or I mean, I mean, I don't like dislike him. I don't extremely dislike him, but I mean, every once in a while, it can get pretty pretty annoying. Okay, so, anyways, yet again, we have another DQ. Eric Rowan interfered. Bray Wyatt did Sister Abigail and John Cena. And um, at the very end, I think the ending was pretty good when uh, he, he Bray Wyatt did Sister Abigail and John Cena in front, like, on the top of the ramp. Um like in by the entrance and the thing is is that um, even though it was a good ending I am sick and tired of seeing John Cena in the spotlight they need to put this guy to the side if he's mid carding every once in a while or if he's missing a couple rounds here and there I don't think that's ne necessarily a bad thing that wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing now I understand for the time being him being in the spotlight they have to have him in the spotlight to some extent because, I mean, the Wyatts are in the spotlight. And the Wyatts are the one that is the best thing that happened to the WWE in a long time. And the Shield as well, in my opinion. So, but once the feud between Cena and the Wyatts subsides, they need to put John Cena to the side because stop throwing him down our faces. And another thing that annoys me about John Cena is not all the time, but a good amount of the time. Sometimes before his entrance music plays and he comes into the ring, 
they'll show like a montage of good deeds that he's done for Make a Wish or for the troops. And I have nothing against that whatsoever. That is great. I respect him outside of the ring. Outside of the ring, he might be a great guy doing all these great things for people. I'm never, never going to knock him for that. And that's good that the troops and people who are in the make wishes whose kids, that's good that they're getting attention. That is a great thing. But what I don't like is the f fact that the WWE, to some degree, exploits that and kind of uses that. And they'll do basically what the WWE is saying. We're going to do everything within our power to try to make the fans root for this guy. But you know something? That's just going to backfire for the most part. And fans are just going to boo him even louder. Again, I have nothing against him helping people. That is a great thing. I respect that 100%. But his character is just flat out boring. They need to finally change it already. Just try to change it at least a little bit. And put him to the side for a little while. I don't think that would necessarily be a bad thing. Let me know what you guys think. If you agree with me, disagree with me, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. F feel free to follow me on Twitter, AlexGold14. Feel free to subscribe to me. And let me know what you think of this past draw. Was it good? Was it great? Was it okay? You didn't care for it? Was it horrible? I thought it was... I thought it had some great moments in it. But... Uh, I give it slightly better than the average. I give it like maybe a 6, 6.5 out of 10. I don't think it was horrible. I don't think it was great. I think it was had good, some good or to great moments. But I overall, I give it slightly above average. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching. Until next time.